a participant using 200 milligrams of test sit per week would continue that dose in addition to beginning 100 milligrams nandrolone decanoate weekly. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreneats.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about nandrolone decanoate use with TRT. So a lot of people always want to ask, um, can I take DECA with TRT? Is it going to fuck me up long term? Is it something I can do to relieve joint pain? Is it something that can be used in conjunction with my TRT? You know, there's not a lot of data in the past years that have been useful to reference. Um, and frankly, there isn't a lot now, but one study did come out March 9th that I've had sitting on my to-do list for a while now that I feel is worth shedding light on because it actually evaluates DECA use specifically with a you know generous TRT dose and exactly evaluating what effect it had on joint pain because the main reason typically people use nandrolone on top of test is to relieve joint pain. And it's interesting because in this article, nandrolone decanoate relieves joint pain in hypogonadal men, a novel prospective pilot study and review of the literature. Basically, like half the thing is going through just, you know, data backing, you know, not even backing, just elaborating on how nandrolone works, you know, the background of it, its history, its synthesis, the side effect profile, blah, blah, blah. The study is like buried in the, in the post, but down near like halfway through it, objective of the pilot study, we designed a novel prospective pilot study to evaluate, quantify, and characterize the effects of nandrolone decanoate on joint pain in hypogonadal men. The people included in the data are people currently using injectable testosterone replacement therapy and also have joint pain. Um, the individuals were men 21 to 70 years old, confirmed diagnosis of hypogonadism, currently treated with injectable intramuscular testosterone. Um, blah, 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 blah. Eligible participants initiated intramuscular nandrolone decanoate dose that one half of their current testosterone cypionate regimen. So this is very, very standard seeing this dosage scheme. Example, a participant using 200 milligrams of test sit per week would continue that dose in addition to beginning 100 milligrams nandrolone decanoate weekly. All other medications, including testosterone dosage, were kept constant throughout the trial period. The dose of nandrolone decanoate was also kept constant until all data was collected. So the results, 48 eligible patients completed the initial study and 18 men, 37.5% responded to follow-up requests. The median duration of therapy was 62 days. Median dose was 110 milligrams per week of nandrolone decanoate. So this means that their TRT was at least 200 to 220 milligrams ish. So around it says the range here was 100 to 150 milligrams of nandrolone. So that means the TRT dose was anywhere from 200 to 300 milligrams, which is interesting and pretty generous. Participants mean age was 46 years old with a racial makeup consisting of 15 Caucasians, two Hispanic, one African-American. Of the 18 men who res responded to their follow-up request, 13, 72.2%, reported marked improvements in joint pain with five of them 27.8 reporting a decreased need for long-standing pain medication amongst responding patients pain scores were, were reduced on average by 52 percent even when accounting for treatment non-responders the collective improvement in pain scores ob observed across each of the four subcategories of the wraps was both statistically significant and profound no adverse events were noted so no adverse events, that is largely because this is a short study and we're not looking at the long-term deleterious impacts on cardiovascular health that nandrolone may have in conjunction with TRT. Um, this is just short-term. Did somebody die during the study or not? No one did, fortunately. We're, but unfortunately, it doesn't really reflect on what we would want to know is, there's any, is there going to be a significant risk to my heart if I use nandrolone with test? But anyways, with that being said, when it comes to joint pain, a lot of this is quality of life stuff, not necessarily like at the end of the day, would you rather live to 80 with a high quality life or 90 with, you know, your fucking joints feeling like shit all the time? I'm pretty sure, you know, most people would take the 80, um, at least in somebody with severe joint pain. So 
assuming, you know, I don't know the severity of their pain exactly, but for so many people to observe marked improvements in their pain scores, as well as some individuals even getting off of pain medication, that or reporting a decreased need for it of long-standing pain medication, something that they have felt dependent on for long periods of time, you know, it presents a very interesting um, scenario in which, you know, not only quality of life has improved significantly, um, but it's also decreasing the need for certain medications that may have otherwise had potentially an even worse effect on actual, you know, overall health in the long term. So maybe there might be an argument that nandrolone in some cases may actually be healthier for some individuals than the alternative, which would be whatever their, you know, heavy duty pain medication is. So, you know, at the, there's a lot of extrapolating that you'll have to do with this study to kind of, you know, pick your own judgment based on the data, but it's very promising and it presents a very, um, I guess, modern approach to TRT that is not often talked about and is often seen as like a taboo topic is, you know, the long-term therapeutic potential of testosterone in conjunction with nandrolone as replacement therapy, despite nandrolone, you know, it's slightly bioidentical as like an intermediary hormone and estrogen synthesis, and it's found in trace amounts in the body and blah, blah, blah. It's bioidentical, but it's also not bioidentical, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, is this something that's beneficial for us to use with, you know, a relative lack of risk compared to alternatives for joint pain? You know, maybe, I don't know. It, I guess we'll, hopefully there'll be more studies elucidating this in the future, but with, at the very least, it's very promising and further studies I feel like are um, definitely justified to, you know, find out and uh, replicate this and characterize these findings on a larger scale because they suggest a novel indication for, you know, a really, really tissue selective drug that is, you know, a lot of people are fans of and appears to hold a lot of therapeutic promise for um, interventions in the future. So. Um, I believe that uh, Nandrolone needs to get looked at closer in the future and hopefully we see some cardiovascular data on it because that's the main thing I am concerned about. So, but anyways, with that being said, it's also becoming more common to be incorporated into hormone replacement therapy clinics and protocols around the country, which, you know, can be seen as good for some individuals who need it. So um, to me, at the end of the day, you know, you can be judgmental of the cardiovascular potential impact it can have as well as the downstream effect it has on other things like progesterone receptors and whatnot, which can, you know, have their own inherent, you know, satellite activity with other receptors that aren't AR, can have certain side effects in certain individuals, but at the end of the day, quality of life versus quantity of life and for somebody in a predicament like this where they have a significant joint pain, maybe it is, you know, you gotta weigh the pros and the cons here. So anyways, it is good, in my opinion, that the HRT clinics in the US seem to have a lot more flexibility now to actually make that call on if the risk of adding nandrolone to somebody's HRT protocol is justified to yield the you know, objective therapeutic benefit that is being sought after you know, relative to considering the inherent risk of adding on an additional anabolic onto an already, you know, exogenous androgen protocol. So anyways, that's honestly it. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can check out the links in the video description below, as well as the HRT clinic that I am associated with. And I would recommend you check out and work with the patient care coordinators there if you are interested in high quality information, as well as health management and um, hormone replacement therapy services that you will otherwise not find at cookie cutter clinics who don't know what the fuck they're talking about and don't have high quality knowledge and don't have, don't research this shit for themselves and just want to make money and or just don't fucking care. I don't know. A lot of, it's just baffling how many clinics in this country are, you know, prescribing ridiculous drugs, ridiculous dosages, have no idea how to read and interpret blood work, don't even know what test to order. It's just a fucking gong show. So if you want to see the company that I am associated with and trust myself, check it out in the description below as well as a coupon code if you want to get a discount off your first consultation if you end up going with them, um, as well as anything else I'm associated with, Gorilla Mode, Gorilla Mind, 
Um, anything else in there supports the channel. Like the video, comment, subscribe. Check me out on Instagram at more plates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. Talk to you guys soon.